Hi, in this video we'll take a deep dive into the new library of the Langram ecosystem Langmem, short for Langgraph Memory. This library is built on top of Langchain and allows us to integrate advanced memory features into our AI applications. So with Langmem we can enhance our applications by leveraging different types of memory, which are semantic memory, episodic memory and procedural memory. Langgraph adopts their categories from human behavior, so we also store different kinds of memories. So first, semantic memory is about general facts and knowledge. So for example, you know that Python is a programming language. Then we've got episodic memory that keeps track of past experiences and events. For example, you remember the first day at work. Then we've got procedural memory that contains information about actions and behaviors. For example, you know how to ride a bicycle without directly re recalling that when you're doing that. Okay, I'm now in VS Code and I'm in the Langgraph tutorial repository. And in here, there is a memory iPad notebook. If you want to follow along, then you can clone the repository and yeah, code along with me. So first we need an OpenAI API key since I use chat OpenAI to integrate that um, Langmem library. And if you don't have installed it yet, then you can do it with pip install and then Langmem. This will install all of the dependencies that you need to create agentic workflows with memory. So we load our OpenAI API key and we start with semantic memory. So semantic memory, like I said, is about factual knowledge. An example for that is knowing a programming language or knowing some details about a person. So to make use of that memory, we first have to create a custom model. In this case, we create a custom class called person, which inherits from Pydantic. Then we define properties like name, the role and preferences here, which is a list of strings, and we will use that in the memory manager. So to create the memory manager, we have to import from Langmem the create memory manager function, and we will instantiate a manager. So as arguments, we have to pass the model, which is an instance of chat OpenAI, and then schemas. As you can see, this is a list of schemas. We only have one, which is person, and then we want an instruction for the LLM. Extract people's names, roles, and mention preferences. We want to be able to insert memories, we want to be able to update memories, and we want to able, be able to delete memories. We can set this to false if we don't want to delete memories um, or if we don't want to insert memories, which yeah doesn't really make sense. But let's create this mem uh, manager class. And then we want to create a custom conversation. So the role is user and we pass two messages. John is a senior developer who loves coffee and Alice is a junior developer who hates coffee. Then we use the invoke method. So this follows the normal interface of Langchain, which makes use of the runnable interface. And we pass the messages like this. So that will return a list of memories. And here you can see we get a list extracted memory with an ID and the content. The content follows the type that we passed here as schema. So we've got the person with name, role, and preferences. And here the LLM extracted name is John. The role is senior developer and the preferences is yeah, a single item in the list, which is coffee. And then for Alice, we got the same names, Alice, junior developer, preferences, no coffee. So this was extracted and I think this is really a nice workflow to extract entities from a human-like text. What I don't like in the current implementation is the following. So we've got a message and the content is today, it rained for two hours and then the sun, sun came out. So we don't have any entities to extract. I would normally expect that we get an empty list, but the following happens. So when we wrap this in a try accept statement, we will catch any error. And as you can see, this works uh, a lot and we can see we get an error. The model produced invalid content. So this is not the behavior I would normally expect, but this happens every time that you use a message that don't uh, follow any entities. And I think that's not, not really good. And maybe the developer team can, can update that. So if you don't agree with me, then of course you're free to write that in the comments. Okay, so now let's go to the next part here in this um, notebook. So the next function here is create memory store manager. So we can create a manager which takes care of a namespace and you just provide messages like this. So we want the LLM to directly save information in a more concise way. So this is about the episodic memory. So every time the LLM identifies something relevant, it will write this relevant memory in this specific namespace that we provide. But important, this memory manager can only be used in a Langgraph function. As you can see, I wrapped it in a try accept statement again, 
And here you can see exception called get config outside of a runnable context. So we have to use that with the following. So we create an entry point, uh, which makes that um, a graph. And now we can use our memory manager inside that graph. We also have to pass a store object to this graph. This is because the memory manager only saves and retrieves from a store, but it does not directly hold the memory. So this is why we need a store. So we make use of an in-memory in store and we use OpenAI embeddings to save the relevant information. So we can easily retrieve it by making a similarity search against the in-memory store. So let's try it out. And now we want to ask the following. So I like to eat pizza. This is some relevant information because I said I only want to save information about food that the users like. Um, one more information, what we also can do is the following. So currently, if we do it like, th like this, then the memory manager will save the information just inside that node. But we can also execute it later. So this is called the hot path where we execute it. And this will increase the latency of our system. Another way to do it is to use that code later in our system. So we can get the response of that node faster. And this is by using an executor. So Langmem has got the reflection executor function. It takes the memory manager as argument. And then we use that executor and use the submit method. And then we process this information that we also use with the memory manager directly. And we use a delay. So when we use delay one, then this part of the code will be executed one second after this line of code will be executed and we directly return the response. So when we do it like this, so we comment that in and we comment that out, then this is called the code path. Okay, but now in our talk, let's use it. And again, we run that code. I like to eat pizza and we've got a name error. Executor is not defined. Uh, sorry, I forgot that. Let's now do it with the executor. Run it again. And now we run this. And now we want to use the search method of the store and search in that namespace. And here we can see that we've got some memories, content user likes pizza, and nothing else. So this is fine because it saved the relevant information. This was not saved, but again, there is a better approach. And my favorite approach is to use tools as often as possible. So now the LLM directly decides whether we want to make use of the manager or not. And I think, yeah, like I said, that's the best approach. Every modern LLM system or agent heavily relies on tool calling. So first we're gonna create a new store and then we import uh, some functions. First create React agent. This makes it easier to build a graph. So we can use a very simple uh, React agent graph. And then we import from langmem the create manage memory tool and create search memory tool. So this is how we create our memory and this is how we search our memory inside the store. And what we do now is we create an instance of chat.mei and we create tools by calling create memory manager tool. We create a namespace and we can use it dynamically with this. So we can also provide a dynamic workflow by providing a user ID. So namespace is always a tuple. So we got the static element memories and then this dynamic element here in brackets user ID. And the store is the store, the in-memory store that we create here. So the ma manager will directly write this in the in-memory store. Now we have to bind the tools to the LLM and with the create react agent function, we just do it like this. We pass the LLM to that function and we pass the tools. So we now have an agent and now we can use that agent to um, yeah, talk to the agent and the agent will decide whether it needs a tool or not. And we do it like this. So we pass messages, the user just says hi, and we pass a configurable here. And here we pass in that user ID. So that's the dynamic part of our memory manager. And um, our user ID is Alice in this case. So we just say hi and we get back information. So the content doesn't really matter. I just want to show you the difference. So we ask, what do you know about me? User ID is still Alice. So what do we get here? And we can see I don't have any specific information. So tool calling was not done yet. But if we say I love spaghetti, 
and we use Alice again, then this time the tool should save them something. So I've noted that you love spaghetti. Okay, next question is, what do you know about me? And now the agent should make use of that memory. I know that you love spaghetti. So that's something that was achieved by using tool calling. I also show you that this is really dynamic. So we asked it again, what do you know about me? And now the user D is Max. And since the memory was saved for Alice, but not for Max, this time we can see I don't have any specific information. So I think that is the workflow, the go-to workflow, when you want to use a specific kind of custom memory for your agent. So this is very flexible and efficient. And I think, yeah, that tool calling is really well implemented. Okay, let's go to the last memory category, which is the procedure memory. And this is used for system instruction. So we use it for custom prompts or custom rules. And there is a method from Langmem create prompt optimizer. And by this, we can update our prompt by using an LLM. So we create this prompt optimizer. And here we pass in what kind of prompt this is. So in this case, we call it meta prompt and we make use of so-called maximum reflection steps. So the LLM creates a new prompt and will then reflect on that updated prompt and do that again until it, it has reached a maximum iteration um, time of three. So let's create that. And now we've got our initial prompt, you're a helpful assistant, and then we provide some messages. So user content explain inheritance in Python and the assistant here is a theoretical explanation dot 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 and yeah. Based on this workflow, we want to create a better prompt. So let's write out. Here is the initial prompt, you're a helpful assistant. And based on that messages, we should get an optimized prompt. So to be honest, uh, this is something that I did not use for something really useful. This is just a, a little demo from the Langmem uh, documentation. But if you find a useful use case for that, then this might help you. So you can see that the prompt was updated, your helpful assistant, when users ask for explanation, especially in programming context, then provide more practical alongside the theoretical explanations. Yeah, I think this might be useful, but to be honest, I personally like to have more control over my own system prompts and not let the LLM uh, directly optimize it because it heavily influences the output of your system. Okay, that's it. So that is the new Langmem uh, library. If you liked the video, then of course, feel free to subscribe to my channel and like the video. See you in the next video. Bye bye.